as COVID-19 grips India and our healthcare system gasps for breath. Today, we put the spotlight on entrepreneurs who have created solutions to aid the war needed to fight the virus. From apps that track oxygen saturation to sensors that can turn a hospital bed into a virtual ICU and an AI-powered chest X-ray detection for a quick diagnosis, these startups have used deep tech to reduce the burden on our overstretched health workforce. Built with deep learning technology and trained using millions of images, Cure AI's tools can identify and localize abnormalities on X-rays, MRI and CT scans. Over the last year, this startup has been working with over 150 healthcare facilities like the BKC COVID Center, the Podar Isolation Center and the Seven Hills COVID Center in Mumbai, among others, and has so far screened over 5 lakh patients for COVID-19 infections to help prioritize treatment based on the severity of infection. Next, health tech company MFind that connects patients with doctors and labs has launched a suite of solutions to take on COVID-19. It's SPO2 tool works as an oximeter that tracks the blood oxygen saturation via a smartphone. The app is still in beta use and has been used by over 1 lakh people, a 10x growth in a week. MFind's home care plan for COVID-19 patients has clocked 50,000 consultations. It was launched just two days ago. Dozy has built a contactless remote patient sensor that can convert a bed into a step-down ICU in under two minutes. The sensor is able to monitor key vitals like heart rate, respiration rate, oxygen saturation, stress recovery, etc. The startup is working with over 150 hospitals across India and is running a 24 by 7 command center at IGMC Nagpur and ESIC in Bengaluru, among others. The sensor is currently monitoring about 4,000 COVID-19 patients and counting. Hello and welcome to Young Turks. I'm Shireen Bhan. Joining me today are the founders of these companies, Prasad Komupalli, the co-founder and CEO of Mpine, Mudit Dantwade, CEO and co-founder of Dozi, and Prashant Warrior, the co-founder and CEO of Cure AI. Gentlemen, appreciate you joining us uh, on CNBC TV 18. These are tough times. Uh, the healthcare system is stretched beyond belief and uh, so solutions like yours are trying to augment what the healthcare system can do at this point in time to provide some relief and come to the aid of those. Uh, in need of treatment and medical attention. Uh, let me first start with you, Prasad, uh, and talk about what MPine is doing because you've just launched the home care plan uh, two days ago in April of 2021, priced at about 2,499 rupees. It promises unlimited consultations with physicians, pulmonologists, dietitians. Uh, can you take me through, uh, you know, how... Uh, you've been able to put this together, what the offtake has already been, because there is so much anxiety at this point in time uh, with people who test positive on RT-PCR, don't know what to do, don't know where to go, hospitals are out of beds. Uh, how are you dealing with this? Yeah, I think uh, fundamentally m is, uh, you know, opening up access as much as possible and taking it uh, uh, and increasing the reach of healthcare facilities across the countries. So the fundamental idea is that uh, you know, to reduce the burden, as you already spoke about, uh, the entire systems, uh, hospitals, diagnostic centers, everything is uh, choked at this point in time. Um, if we can only provide uh, a remote uh, care uh, facility, which is uh, which has been the platform that MFN has been building over the last three, four years, we partner with, uh, you know, 600 of the hospitals in the country, 400 plus uh, diagnostic centers. So we have the infrastructure and the platform and the solution. So we're really putting it to use in the in this uh, you know, situation of uh, crisis. So people can actually, you know, with milder and moderate symptoms, can re can be taken care at home uh, without panicking, without uh, really you know rushing around and you know uh, reducing by reducing the load on the uh, hospitals as well uh, as we know ICUs and beds and oxygen ventilators. Everything is in uh, short supply right now. At least most of the cases where uh, there is a moderate and uh, minor symptoms. Uh, can be taken care at home itself um, and that's the idea of the COVID home care plan uh, so we just launched it people just lap it up because we have the platform already of remote care and teleconsultations with doctors we could immediately put together this uh, COVID specific uh, solution and people are really uh, needing it and wanting it and taking it up 
Absolutely. I would imagine that, uh, uh, you know, there are many takers at this point in time, purely because you want access to credible information. You want attention, medical attention, uh, without having to go to a hospital. And even if you try and get yourself to a hospital, you're not going to be able to get into one. But Prasad, you know, uh, what is the biggest uh, uh, need at this point in time? Because what we're seeing across the country testing, there is a backlog in being able to get your test and then get results, for instance. What kind of tests are people coming to you for? Uh, RT-PCR, of course, would be one, but I would imagine that a whole bunch of other uh, tests, for instance, the uh, D-dimmer, uh, CRP, yes, etc., the inflammatory tests would also be something that people are coming to you for. Absolutely. So um, the number of tests we are doing for uh, really assessing the severity with the inflammation markers uh, DDM or CRP tests, etc. We are doing this just has grown uh, 10x, and the CT scans have increased to understand the uh, infection and the you know uh, the chest uh, CT scans, etc. So I think the the point is I think testing is uh, uh, extremely extremely important right now. Massive testing is uh, is needed to really detect early enough. Um, while on the other hand, we actually in uh, COVID home care uh, with the panel of doctors that we have with telemedicine, et cetera. What we are saying is that if you have symptoms, if you have uh, fear of uh, exposure and combined with symptoms, start the care. Uh, you can give your test sample, you can give your blood test, et cetera, but don't delay the care until the report mm. comes. Assume mm. that uh, you may be infected, yeah. take, the, uh, take the isolation measures, uh, take the me uh, medicines that can be taken symptomatically at least, um, you know, and, uh, you know, vitamin C kind of things, et cetera, and supplements, et cetera, whatever is needed to isolate yourself yeah. and strengthen your immunity, start the care immediately while the test is going on. And I think the biggest requirement really, yes, is uh, testing so that we can detect early enough. But uh, with the way the demand mm. has spiked, mm. uh, compared to last year, the spike, the rate of, uh, uh, you know, increase and the rate of reaching the peak is like, you know, probably 4x or 5x, right? And in that case, um, it, it, it's important to test, but in the, it's also important not to delay the care. Uh, just assume that you know, there is a spread of virus, yeah. there is a possibility of exposure, start the care immediately, we'll talk to the doctors, talk to the experts, and do whatever it is needed to actually control the uh, infection for self as well as control the spread. That's the approach we are taking with COVID home care plus all the test facilities that we are providing. Uh, you're absolutely right, uh, you know, because uh, what we are seeing across cities at this point in time is that results, I mean, A, testing is getting delayed because of the backlog. And then by the time you get your result, uh, it could be another three, four days. So as Prasad is pointing out, isolation and whatever care that is required, depending on how symptomatic you are, must start uh, in consultation with a medical practitioner even before you actually get uh, an RT-PCR positive or, uh, report. But Prashant Warrior, let me come to you now and talk to you about what uh, Cure AI has been able to do through the course of the pandemic. Uh, uh, you know, how challenging has it been for you as well, uh, Prashant, uh, to try and work with the Jumbo facility, for instance, in Mumbai? Yeah, yeah. So when, uh, I mean, this started, we started doing this uh, for COVID about a year ago. We already had an X-ray solution which could interpret, uh, use, using AI, we could interpret chest X-rays, identify TB and 28 other abnormalities. And we built out, expanded that to include COVID-19 last year, about uh, March of last year when COVID um, came to India. And uh, we started working with uh, MCGM, uh, the Municipal Corporation of Greater Mumbai, to deploy this across various sites. And at that time, again, testing was low. I mean, initially, in India last year, the testing was not enough and not everybody was able to get RT-PCR tested right away. So X-ray could be an alternative to RT-PCR testing. Mm. It could be something yeah. that you can, uh, so including let's say antigen testing, which has a lot of false negatives, you could uh, use an X-ray and between X-ray and antigen mm. testing, you could uh, potentially diagnose COVID-19, right? You could at least, like Prasad said, you could at least uh, start uh, providing care mm. for that patient. And uh, so we deployed in various sites in Mumbai. We, we deployed in the uh, jumbo sites. We had these uh, buses that were going to uh, the slums in Mumbai and we were getting screening done in those slums using the X-ray plus the SpO2 and other clinical num other clinical numbers, right? So that was what we were doing uh, last year. And then mm. what happened is uh, we, I mean, uh, with the number of testing, the tests that were available in Mumbai and some of the bigger cities, we saw that the opportunity was actually, I mean, some of the need was more in the rural parts of India where there were testing was still taking about three to five yeah. weeks. We deployed in about uh, 35 uh, plus rural sites in India where 
the QXR AI output, because they don't have a radiologist, they don't have enough testing, and for them, test results take about three mm. to five days. Mm. So the QXR AI results actually tell them exactly what they should do with that patient. Should they quarantine that patient? Should they uh, let that patient go back home? So they use that result to make sure that uh, they're mm. providing the proper care for that patient. And anyway, COVID-19 is a chest infection. So if your X-ray is abnormal, that means that there is something that you need to uh, treat for immediately. <clears throat> so that was what we're doing. And now what is happening is because, again, I mean, even in the big cities now, testing is not enough, right? So we are seeing some of the same demand coming in from the big cities yeah. where uh, it's taking weeks to get a test result. So can we start using AI interpretation of X-rays? Can we, again, the point is that can we use an X-ray interpretation to uh, start providing care for the patient? And when it comes to X-ray interpretation, again, lots of places do not necessarily have a radiologist available immediately to read that X-ray, while we can provide mm. AI which can mm. read that X-ray in a minute. So that is what we're doing in many sites where we are providing an X-ray based interpretation uh, in a minute that can then help uh, provide the right care for the patient. Okay, so you're saying the turnaround time in uh, being able to interpret an image is what, a minute? It's a minute. It's a minute to interpret a chest X-ray. Wow. Okay, so Prashant, you know, you talked about how you are working with uh, uh, the local authorities in Mumbai. Uh, you're also uh, trying to take the solution to rural parts of the country. Now, in the second wave, there isn't an inch of this country that is not affected. Are you getting, uh, you know, requests from state governments, local authorities, private players to, uh, you know, to, to join hands with them, to augment uh, uh, the uh, the uh, plans that they are putting in place. How how can you scale up at this point in time, given the, the challenge? So we are uh, facing a I mean, lot of requests. We are, I mean, a lot of people, a lot of state governments, uh, city governments are asking us to deploy in those uh, regions, right? A lot of people are asking us to deploy. And we are, I mean, for us, I mean, this is a tech solution. So for us, scale is very easy. I mean, we can deploy in maybe 100 sites in a day. So if you have to deploy in 1,000 sites, we can do that in 10 days. And uh, that scale is very easy. Um, so we are prepared for scale. And we're working with lots of state and city governments to deploy the solution so that we can provide an alternative to RT-PCR testing using an X-ray interpretation and provide that X-ray interpretation very quickly. OK, uh, you know, I would imagine or I would at least hope that uh, there are more uh, people uh, both within government uh, hospitals, uh, local authorities, as well as the private sector uh, who actually take you up on your offer because the need of the hour at this point in time is uh, uh, is diagnosis. And if and if you can help by uh, providing this solution, then I would imagine that that is going to be a big service done. But Mudit, let me come to you now and talk to you about what Dozy is being able to do. Uh, you provide contactless remote patient monitoring solutions. To put it simply, I'm being given to understand that you can convert any hospital bed or any bed into a step-down ICU in under two minutes. What does that mean exactly? Correct. So, thanks a lot for that. So, uh, what do you mean by that? It's a full uh, stack service. So, first, as you mentioned, we provide this contactless sensor. That, uh, uh, that, that is like a small sheet of sensor that we just place under the mattress. Uh, under the chest area of the person. And from there, it monitors person's heart rate, respiration, oxygen saturation, blood pressure, and other clinical indicators. This data is then transmitted uh, to the cloud where it is processed, and then alerts are generated. This data is then converted into these biomarkers. Uh, then AI engine converts it into uh, alerts. If the person's heart rate is going up or if the saturation is falling down and things like that. These are then escalated to the command center and to the clinicians, which then take care of it by then shifting patients either to ICUs or using ventilators or altering their oxygen therapy. So that is how this entire cycle works like, right from converting bed into a continuous monitoring unit to improving the patient outcomes one mm -hmm. better time. Okay, so Mudit, how many beds currently across India are using this remote sensor of yours? How many hospitals do you have a tie-up with? And has demand uh, surged given what we are currently seeing today with the second wave? So right now we are managing about 4,000 beds across India. This is across about 120 hospitals in 18 cities in the country. Uh, 
and uh, yes the demand has certainly surged up but uh, that is also one time where you know we can also step up to serve more and more people because what is actually he uh, helping and how it is helping the hospitals it directly saves one of the most crucial and most rare resource that we have today that is a intensivist and nurses time so dozy in last uh, yeah, about 6 yeah. months have saved more than 30000 nursing hours and has uh, impacted about 547 lives by timely escalating these alerts uh, to the intensivists and nurses who can then go to the patient and actually uh, improve the patient outcomes over there Okay, that's uh, that is quite uh, a statistic that you've been able to, through the use of this app, in the hospitals that you work with, bring down thirty thousand nursing hours. And we all know uh, that uh, you know whether it's nursing staff or intensivists are in short supply and constrained, uh, given the deluge of patients that we are seeing today. So, how does it work? Do you have a monitoring cell in each facility, uh, uh, how, you know, or is there a sort of hub? How does it work? right so along with devices there is a central monitoring cell where this entire data is transmitted so from a single screen clinicians can monitor the entire wards right and without even entering the wards so that's where even the safety picture also comes into the play that nurses and mm. doctors they reduce their exposure that is the another big plus that the system brings into the uh, uh, picture and then uh, from there they manage the alerts now in some places what we have done is because uh, it takes a bit of hand holding time to even nurses uh, for hospitals to understand this so in couple of hospitals we are also helping the nursing staff out in manning that control center as well Okay. Uh, well, uh, th that explains the process of how you're being able to use those remote sensors. But uh, uh, Prasad, I want to come back and ask you about something that MFine is uh, testing at this point in time, which is MFine Pulse, which is basically an app on your smartphone uh, that can be used like an oximeter. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, the fundamental idea is really that uh, uh, instead of having an extra device. Uh, if we can actually give the uh, pulse oximetry uh, to be done within the app itself, with MFine app, um, every smartphone user, every smartphone uh, becomes a pulse oximeter in itself. Uh, we just developed this over the last, uh, in the, during the COVID uh, first wave. Uh, now we launched it uh, with beta. Already uh, nearly 100,000 people have uh, tried and used it. We are uh, calling it beta because we are collecting more data, making our AI algorithm behind it um, uh, more solid. Uh, it's in, with, I think we are uh, just a week to 10 days away from uh, launching it in a public productive version. That uh, See, as, a, as uh, I think Mudit was talking about, Prashant was talking about, I think monitoring is an extremely important uh, 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 important measure that we need to take okay. right now. So people, when they have the symptoms, they have to understand that, you know, apart from the symptoms that they're seeing, the cough or uh, anything else, um, they can really have these medical vitals um, monitored as made them as accessible as possible so that they can really take uh, early action. So uh, it just takes 20 seconds, open the yeah. app and put a finger on the camera and take a 20 second reading, uh, 15 to 20 second reading, and then uh, you get your uh, you know oxygen saturation level in okay. blood. So that's a okay. very, very important. Uh, I, uh, I, would, I would imagine that you have it on your phone. Yes, absolutely. Okay, so so yeah. you're saying just put the finger on the camera and wait for what, 15, 20 seconds? Yeah, that's it. Yeah, I can, I can, I can show it to you right away if you want. Okay. You time. Yeah, go ahead. Go ahead. Yeah, so you, from the app, uh, you just put the finger as I'm putting on the flash and the camera. And it's actually... Um, You'll just have to hold up the up. phone higher. Is it, is it okay? Yeah, it's fine. It's fine. So, that's how it simply measures. Uh, you can see. Um, okay. Thankfully, my oxygen saturation is okay. Um, yeah, so it's as simple as that. The idea is that really 
make every smartphone without an extra device, without any, uh, uh, you know, any other uh, extra effort within 15 seconds. This is a very important vital to be measured, particularly when you have lung infections, uh, uh, COVID mm -hmm. infection causing, mm -hmm. you know, lung infection, et cetera, and condition. And uh, this is being used uh, by uh, already a, a lack of people. And when we open it up for more people in the productive version, we hope that uh, we can be of help for, I you know, uh, millions of people. Well, and uh, so we should expect the launch in a week, 10 days. Uh, uh, that's the word coming in from Prasad. That, that is a, uh, an app that is likely to be available on your smartphone. So you won't need to go out there and get yourself an oximeter additionally. Prashant, I want to talk to you about what's uh, next, what's on the horizon now, given the experiences, the challenges as well as uh, the plans that you have uh, from after seeing what uh, the pandemic has brought to our shores. Sure. So one of the things that we are working on right now is, uh, I mean, I, I personally, I mean, receive uh, so many x-rays on my phone from doctors who want to get it read by cure, right? And I was uh, on WhatsApp. And so we are look, looking at exploring something where uh, we can enable uh, a WhatsApp number or a Telegram number. WhatsApp is uh, not that good because it condenses the information. It compresses uh, the uh, scan a little bit, but Telegram sends it to you in full resolution. Mm -hmm. And you mm -hmm. need a full resolution mm -hmm. for AI. So we are looking at uh, something where we can just send a uh, image on Telegram, uh, and we can provide an output in one minute. Again, that will be only for uh, physicians, not for uh, only not for patients to use. Because again, the interpretation that we provide is uh, meant for a physician interpretation rather than. Uh, I mean, we don't want to be a B two C, and we don't want to provide this interpretation to the patients because again, it's a regulated environment. It's a regulated product. These are AI products, are medical devices, mm. and uh, we have to make sure that we are providing something which uh, could potentially scare somebody. And uh, so it's it's meant for used by physicians. So that is something that we're working on right now. And then we are also, uh, I mean, uh, not, not around COVID, but... How soon do you expect to launch this? Uh, probably in the next uh, le less than a week from now. Because right now is the okay, need. So, so also in on about a week. So we'll have Prasad, Prasad's beta uh, launching, uh, app launching, and uh, uh, Prashant launching your Telegram service for physicians. Yep. And you were telling me about what else you've got uh, so, uh, up your sleeve? Yeah. So the other thing that we are working on uh, a lot, I mean, uh, recently has been around uh, diagnosing stroke and trauma at the uh, point of care. So what happens is uh, you have these CT scan machines, uh, especially in rural parts of India, where you don't have a radiologist available uh, immediately to read that scan. And what we're doing is, again, we have an AI which can interpret uh, trauma, so bleeds, uh, fractures, uh, and so on on a head CT scan, and also stroke on a head CT scan. So as soon as uh, you take a HCT scan, we can, within a minute, we can alert uh, the physician, alert the emergency physician using, again, a telegram message that this is the critical scan, there is a bleed or there is a stroke mm -hmm. uh, on the patient, and you need to read that immediately. So we are doing that in several parts of India now. We're working okay. with uh, in Assam and scaling that up again across the country. Well, that's good to hear. And Mudit, I'll give you the final say. Uh, what's next uh, uh, for Dozi? So Dozi is coming up with a home version of the service as well. So especially designed for COVID. So like we are, you know, converting all the hospital beds into continuous monitoring unit. Idea is to make healthcare more proactive and not uh, reactive, right? So we're coming up with same for home as well. In fact, it is already available in Bangalore and, uh, you know, people who are reaching out from our website. But we are going to uh, reach out even more so in that. People can, uh, families can monitor each other's health remotely. Uh, and uh, the same uh, device, the same technology is going to convert uh, even at the home as well. And while the people are sleeping, uh, right, uh, you can monitor their health. So like my mom is sleeping right now, I can monitor her health from my mobile that her, uh, how is her heart rate, respiration, blood pressure, saturation, each one of them is doing. And today that is the golden thing that we have, right? That just to see that how family is doing and if they are doing good, that is the assurance that we really want to deliver. And for COVID, what we are also trying to do is along with this, we are also uh, working with few organizations to, in, in case uh, there is a COVID emergency, they can also consult the doctors as well, uh, based on the data that they have. Uh, in the meanwhile, that they are arranging for pets or anything, which anyways is a very scarce resource. So we are trying to enable people at their home right. only how right. they can manage their health 
and uh, so, you know so hospitals Mudit, uh, load is ready. you know to, yes. to start with I, I i get that to start with i want to wish your mother a very speedy recovery i hope that she uh, is well very soon uh, but uh, how, doing how doing when well. will this be available for, well. for people to use so it is already available on the website it is already there uh, in fact we have already started to ship out from last week and uh, you know more than 1000 uh, users are there who are uh, you know managing it in fact just yesterday delivered to a a, a family uh, so a 89 year old son bought it for mother and himself and their grandson is now monitoring them from us so that's how uh, you know uh, dozy is making this world very small and giving them assurance all across the globe well prasad prashant and mudit i have to say it has been such a bleak week uh, but you have uh, offered us uh, a ray of hope here uh, on cnbc tv 18 and on young trucks i wish you and your teams the very best of luck uh, uh, and uh, we look forward to hearing more from you and we do hope uh, that the solutions you are providing will aid the fight against covid-19 appreciate your time thanks very much for joining us here on cnbc tv 18 we'll take a break here on young trucks a lot more coming up Don't go anywhere we're back in a moment big bazaar la